The light then expanded and enveloped all four men. That's the last thing I remember. They woke up, woke up as in parentheses, back at their campsite with no recollection, recollection of what ended up happening with the light or how they got off the, of the water. The fire they'd stoked up before they left just minutes ago, intending to still be burning when they returned, was completely burned down to embers. So that's the story. This is the aftermath. Okay. Gaping buttholes. Jack Wiener. (laughs) (laughs) Was the first to start having nightmares. In these dreams, he saw beings with long necks and large heads. He saw the beginning examining the beings. Beginnings. The beings examining his arm while Jim, Chuck, and Charlie sat on a nearby bench, not able to intervene. The beings had large metallic glowing eyes with no lids, and their hands were insect-like with four fingers. The other three men were experiencing very similar dreams with short mental clips of that night on the lake. In 1988, out of curiosity, Jim Wiener attended a UFO conference hosted by Raymond Fowler. Wiener met F- <laughs> <laughs> Wiener met Fowler afterwards and related his strange encounter the investigator was excited about jim's story especially the fact that it was a multiple witness occurrence fowler suggested to jim that he and the others undergo a regressive hy- hypnosis after the sessions it was revealed that all four of the men had memories of being ad- ab- abducted and subjected to humiliating physical examinations including the taking of skin and fluid samples the description of the aliens aliens was <laughs> consistent. The four men being artists were able to make detailed sketches of the entities, the craft, and the examining instruments. Chuck Rack added that the aliens' test area was similar to a vet's office with a silvery table. He also related a strange fact. He had he had much difficulty in focusing on the aliens when he tried he could not put an exact image to them he compared it to trying to tune in a fuzzy radio station after the psych after the psychiatric examinations all four of the men were deemed to be mentally stable and they all passed lie detector tests whoa yeah that's one of the most popular stories Um, do you want me to do one more? Do you want to talk? So, um, I'll talk about my first one. So what I wanted to do for alien, our alien episode is, so there's all kinds of conspiracy theories and like finger quotes in the air right now, proof about aliens in ancient history. Obviously there's a TV show, ancient aliens or aliens. Aliens. It where came aliens from. comes from. So one of like the big thing, like with crop circles, people believe it's aliens. The other thing are they're called geoglyphs. Okay. All my information's from Wikipedia, folks. So <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. A geoglyph is a large design or a motif, generally longer than four meters, produced on the ground by Durable elements of the landscape, such as stones, stone fragments, gravel, or earth. A positive geoglyph is formed by the arrangement and alignment of materials on the ground in a manner akin to petroforms, while a negative geoglyph is formed by removing, so it would be like digging, Okay. Um, the natural ground surface to create a different colored or textured ground in the, a manner akin to petroglyphs. Geoglyphs are generally a type of land art and sometimes a rock art. A hill figure is created on a slope, and that can also be seen from the distance. So a lot of... (coughs) Sorry. So a lot of people know in Peru is some of the most famous geoglyphs with the Nazca lines. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of theory that the Nazca lines were actually formed by aliens, at Uh least some of them. 
So I wanted to talk about the Nazca lines for a minute. So the Nazca lines are a group of geoglyphs made in the soil of the Nazca Desert in southern Peru. They were created between 500 BC and uh, 500 AD um, by people making depressions and shallow incisions in the desert floor, removing pebbles and leaving different colored dirt exposed. There are two major phases of the Nazca lines. Paracos phase from 400 to 200 BC and the Nazca phase from 200 BC to 500 AD. In the years leading up to 2020, between 80 and 100 new figures have been found with the use of drones and archaeologists believe that there are more to be found out there. So they're like all over. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the lines run straight across the landscape, but there are figurative designs of animals and plants. Individual figurative geoglyph designs between 400 and 1100 meters. So that's like 1200 yards, which is like 36,000 feet Mm -hmm. or 3,600 feet. Yeah. Um, the combined length of the lines are over 800 miles of lines. Um, The group covers like an area of about 50 square kilometers. Uh, The lines are typically 10 to 15 centimeters, four to six inches deep. And they were made by removing the top layer of the reddish brown iron oxide coated pebbles to reveal a yellow gray subsoil. Um, Some of the Nazca lines formed shapes are best seen from the air up to 600 or 1600 feet gives you the best view to see them. And they are also visible from surrounding foothills and other high places. The shapes are usually made um, from one continuous line, the largest being 400 yards long. Because of its isolation and the dryness, the dry, windless, stable climate of the plateaus, the lines have been preserved naturally. The figures vary in complexity, and hundreds of simple lines and geometric shapes are more than set. Uh, hundreds are geometric lines and simple shapes. But more than 70 are zoomorphic designs, including a hummingbird, spider, fish, condor, heron, monkey, lizard, dog, cat, and a human. Other shapes include trees and flowers. Um, oh, I see what you added in my notes. There. Yeah. I never I saw that I last messaged night. it to you. Yep. Sorry. Um, but so along those lines, I, I didn't write everything down. Yeah. I was thinking about like crop circles and everything. And the one thing I couldn't find enough information about was there is this plate Uh that is supposedly dated 12,000 years ago. And it's like in a swirling design. And I wish I could find, I'm going to find the name of the plate, but, um, in ancient Egypt, okay, so it's called the Lolodolf plate. And I'm going to show you a picture of it. Okay. So that way you can see what I'm talking about. It's very clearly depicted aliens. This has been carbon dated mm-hmm. for 12,000 years. Okay. And there's aliens carved in it. And in the very center is literally a freaking UFO or the sun. And then there's a UFO above it. Yeah. Ancient a aliens. Lizard. Also. A yeah. Alien. The lizard people, which is part two. Mm. <laughs> is that but a fox? Yeah, there's all kinds of things. And like I if you look UFO, at the alien. There's the a lot convenient. of stuff in Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yes. There's a lot of things that could be seen as aliens. Uh-huh. Um, there's a lot of theories that some of the intricate designs, like it's seen like the pharaohs are almost pushing yeah. something. And it's like the par- pharaohs are like pushing these up to the sky. Mm-hmm. And like those could be seen as um, like rocket ships and et cetera. Really, like people, if you have time, just look up ancient aliens. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's really cool. Whether or not you believe in it, it's just cool. 
Aliens are real. Aliens are real. Okay. Okay. I you. got a shorty. Shouty? Mm-hmm. I was traveling home. Sorry, I was traveling back home with my mom from my aunt's house on a warm, sunny afternoon. While I was sitting in the passenger seat, an object just appeared in the sky a little to our left. We both saw it immediately. The size of it is what was shocking more than anything. It had the classic saucer shape and was shining brightly because the sun was reflecting off of it. We continued driving down the road a few seconds, just admiring this craft when all of a sudden we saw something I still don't believe to this day. It just vanishes, disintegrates, disappears, whatever you want to call it. I looked back at my mom and I could tell by her expression that she had seen the same thing. Since this sighting, I have always been interested in UFOs and the possibility of other life in our universe. The object in the sky was definitely not a helicopter, airplane, or a flock of geese. My mom and I still talk about the sighting we had and can't come up with a reasonable explanation as to what we saw that day. Everyone always laughs at me when I tell this story, but that's fine. I know what I saw. Oh, yeah, that was a short one. Yeah, it was a short one. Okay, so we can't talk about aliens without talking about conspiracy theories. Agreed. And um, New World Order conspiracy theory could have been its own episode. Uh huh. But um, I'm just gonna. I gathered some information from Yield Wikipedia, and uh, so NWO, as in the New World Order, uh-huh. is a conspiracy theory in which hypothesizes a secret a secretly emerging totalitarian world government i believe this <clears throat> the common theme in conspiracy theories about a new world order is that a secretive power elite with a globalist agenda is conspiring to conspiring to eventually rule the world through an authentic authoritarian one world government which will replace sovereign nation states and all encompassing propaganda whose ideology hails the establishment of the new world as a co- culmination of history's progress many influential historical and contemporary figures have therefore been alleged to be part of a cabal that operates through many front organizations to orchestrate significantly political and financial events ranging from causing a systemic crises to pushing through controversial policies at both national and international levels as steps in an ongoing plot to achieve world domination. If you guys don't believe that, all you got to look at is Elon Musk. Yeah. He was going to fight Putin for Russia in hand-to-hand combat. <laughs> he even looks like an alien. He is an alien. He named his child like X I know. something, whatever. I know. It was weird. Yeah, that child's not human. <clears throat> the mother the... also doesn't look human. No, That's no. Out of this world. She's a robot, I Un- promise you. Unintended. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just struck Cena. It did. <laughs> Before the early 1900s, New World Order. <laughs> New World Order conspiracism was limited to two American countercultures, primarily the militantly anti government right and secondarily part of the fundamentalist Christianity concerned with the end time emergence of the Antichrist. Skeptics. Uh, such as Michael Barkund and Chip Bertlett, observed that right-wing populist conspiracy theories about New World Order had not only been embraced by many seekers of a stigmatized knowledge, but all had also seeped into pop culture, thereby inaugurating a period during the late 20th and early 21st centuries in the United States where people are actively preparing for apocalyptic millenarian 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 <laughs> leave that in Dustin <laughs> millenarian scenarios those political scientists are concerned 
Those political 